This is lab number six, accelerated motion. You're looking at the equipment for this lab. It's actually pretty simple stuff. It's a track uh, at an angle. It's propped up on one end, so it's at a small angle of two or three degrees. And there's a cart sitting at the bottom of the track. That's the same red cart that you've been seeing so much of lately. There is a spring in the back of the cart. When I press the little black button on top, the cart will be launched and given some energy by the spring. Uh, it will also be given some, more importantly for us at this time, uh, some initial velocity. That velocity, as it goes up the track, will fall off because gravity is pulling it back down the track. At some point, the velocity will fall to zero, the cart will stop, and it will immediately start accelerating back down the track until it crashes into the barrier. And that's the data we're going to collect. So let me, uh, well, first of all, let's look at the capstone file. Uh, the same file you saw before. I've already logged into the cart. I want a graph and I'm going to set uh, I want a velocity, but I'm going to start with position because it's going to be a little more interesting. And I'm ready to go. So let me change the view so we can uh, see both. Here we go. And now let me launch the cart. I press record. And go. Off it goes, up the cart. See a nice curve. You should know the name of that curve. It's the curve you always get with a constant acceleration. And we know the acceleration here is constant because the only thing that's pulling back down the track is gravity. And gravity is constant near Earth, or so they say. And that's what I did. I did it 20 times. 10 different angles with a, a, the cart, that, as you see it there, 10 different angles with the cart with extra mass on it. Now, let me show you what you have to do to uh, get your data out of it. And let me get rid of that inset picture so your life is a little easier. Sorry, it takes a couple of seconds to load 20 pictures plus data and here we go. So this is the introductory page. Um, it tells you that you can see the masses of the two cards below. Uh, this is not the same scale we used before. That scale had a limit of 400 grams. I needed something closer to eight, so I switched scales. This scale is reading in grams. So you can accept an uncertainty of plus or minus half a gram. And that's what you'd use for your calculations. The rest of this text uh, tells you about the angle tool. This is the angle tool, this yellow thing. I'll show you how to set it up or where to get it. And you're going to use this to measure this angle. Now that angle is a digital reading of 2.27 degrees. And we said that for digital readings, uh, you go to half of the digit before. So our uncertainty here would be plus or minus 0 0.005 degrees. That's way small, uh, impossibly small. The angle uh, can't be measured that closely. Uh, you'll see me struggling to line it up by eye. Uh, we'll have to talk about what's more reasonable when I show you the data itself. Across the top here, you have a series of tabs. Uh, procedure 1, trial 1 through 10, and procedure 2, 1 through 10. And again, the only difference is the mass that's in the cart. Let's look at one. So here there are a couple of differences. One, these velocity curves are pointing in the other direction. Let me go back to the position curve and I'll show you why. Whereas before we were getting uh, the position uh, measured in a positive direction, here, I've started the cart from the other side. Uh, in that demo, I was on the right side. Here, I'm on the left side. This is normal for us. 
but the spring is only on one side of the cart and to get it incorporated I had to put it in a direction where it thinks it's negative. Uh, we normally say that we get to choose our coordinate axes and we would normally choose uh, positive is up uh, but here the cart is getting to choose and it's saying that the positive direction is down towards uh, the end of the track and negative in the motion direction of motion. That's why when you go back to the velocity curve they're in the other direction. So let's talk about what happens here. Um, when I launch the cart, it velocity jumps. It has an initial velocity. We're not interested in this part. This is the part where it's being accelerated by the spring, which we don't know that much about, so we're going to leave alone. It then goes into standard acceleration, deceleration in this case. The acceleration is in uh, behind the cart in what the cart thinks is the positive direction. And this is a positive acceleration. What's maybe not so obvious is that these are two different accelerations. When the cart passes the x-axis, the acceleration changes. So if I highlight that bottom part and get a fit, I get 0.516. That's the acceleration uh, in the negative part. And if I come up here, there's the acceleration for the positive part. And it's 0.443. So it's significantly different. Why it's different is an interesting question. Uh, and if you do a free body diagram and do it properly, you should be able to tell uh, why that happens. Uh, it's fairly obvious. Uh, and it's a good exercise for you to try and figure it out. So what you're going to do is just what I did. You're going to take the slopes of each of these, the positive and the negative, you're going to record them. And I'll talk about the analysis in the, caps, uh, the Google document that accompanies the lab. And you're going to do it 20 times. And that's it for uh, the file. That's all you need to know from here. Uh, oh, no, it's not. I have to show you how to use the angle. So we're going to measure the angle here. Why do you need the angle? You'll hear that in the Google file. So if you look at this tool here, there's this create measurement tool. You open it up and if one of them is angle tool, click on that and you get this and you can grab the ends and find a place where it lines up where the two meet and then grab the other end and align them. There. So that looks pretty good. But again, as I said, it's almost certainly not plus or minus 0 0.005 degrees. I'm not going to ask you to try and figure this out. I'm just going to uh, give you my opinion. My opinion that uh, we'll do well if this is plus or minus half a degree. And that's your uncertainty for this. One more thing is to discuss the uncertainty of the acceleration. If you look here, the slope here is 0.443 plus or minus 0.0012. So I'm going to use that to estimate this, the uncertainty here. And I'm going to say that the uncertainty is plus or minus 0.002. So now you have the uncertainty of the three measurements you'll be able to do the calculations as needed. And now we're finished with this and you can go back to the Google document and uh, read about your analysis after you've collected your data. And that's it for today. Good luck with the lab.